Welcome to McFly Angler. I've never been a guide, but I still enjoy teaching people how to catch more fish. So join me in this video where I show you how I tie this fly. To start, we will need a strong saltwater hook like these from Risen Fly. I'm using a size 2, but normally these are tied much, much larger. Place the hook securely in your vise. Now for thread, traditionally I believe these are tied with mono thread, but I find a strong thread like this Vivas 140 power thread works really good, and I like using the brown. Start your thread halfway down the shank of the hook. Clip off the waist and then bring your thread back to the start of the bend of the hook. Normally you would want a gill here with red flashaboo, but unfortunately I forgot this step while filming. I like the end result better, so you'll see later. So next, pretty much this is the only remaining materials you'll use on the fly. A mix of EP fibers, or in this case I'm using Congo hair which is less expensive and I believe just as good. And no, I don't have the exact colors I'm using because the stickers have ripped off over time of using this stuff. Don't ask. Well, okay, you can ask, but I probably won't have an answer. Anyway, let's start with the off-white color here. You want a fairly small amount. The amount you use here will depend on the size of the fly that you're tying. With the size 2, this is about the right amount. Cut the material in half, since we won't be needing that length for this size fly. Tie it in on top of the shank, right in the center of the bunch like so. Then fold the forward facing fibers rearward and tie those down as well. Now I like to brush out the fly at each step to ensure that all the fibers are sitting nicely before continuing on. Also, with the brown sharpie, make some bars on the tail. Okay, now we need about the same amount of light olive colored fiber. Tie it in the same way that you did the white section of the tail. Now I like to add a dab of super glue to make this fly more durable. It's actually something I do periodically along the way. However, while adding the glue I realized that I forgot to add the red flashaboo gills. So I tried to add it right here, and I actually liked this result better. They were more visible. So make sure that they're on each side of the tail, and then trim them short, maybe about half of a hook length. Now we need the sections to build the body of the fly. Let's start with the tan color fiber. Cut about the same size section off, but this time we're cutting it into four equal sections. Okay, well this one I only got three. That's okay. We will need more than this though. About six to seven will be needed. So let's do this again. There we go, seven equal sections. Now for the dark brown fiber. Do the same thing as the tan fiber. Only on the second row of fiber, make these slightly thicker as to build a larger and bulkier head. Now to tie these sections in. I like to turn the fly upside down and start with the tan section. Tie it in parallel to the hook shank like so. Then flip the fly over and tie in the brown section on top facing the same way as the tan. Now pull the forward facing fibers rearward and place a thread dam over them. This first section will be tricky and you'll want to take your time and get it right because this is a spot that transitions into the tail. So make sure it's even around the hook. Continue doing this until you reach the head of the fly. Try to get as much as you can on there, and if you need to, you can pack the fibers further back, almost like you would with deer hair. The final section of the head can be tricky, and you can use less fiber if needed to stuff it behind the eye. This right here though is why I love using these hooks. The eyes are oversized, so it's really easy to stuff materials behind them without tying over the eyes. Again, make sure you comb out the fly before whip finishing to make sure that everything is positioned where you want it. Once you're happy with the fly, then you can whip finish and trim off the waist. However, here I caught some of the fibers while whip finishing, so I trimmed them off and whip finished again to get a neater head on the fly. So you could add super glue here, but I love adding Bone Dry from Solarez, which is a UV curing resin that dries super hard and shiny. I've also reviewed the light that I cure it with, so if you want to watch that video, I will link that in the description section. Two coats of this stuff makes the head look super shiny and nice. Now we need to trim out this fly. 
Start by combing the fly once again, and then stroke out the fibers and kind of fan them out like so. Then I start with one wide angle cut, from the head down to the tail. Make sure you don't cut off too much though, just trim out a rough shape, but leave more at the head than the tail. Next do the same to the underside, but use the bend of the hook as a guide of where to cut. Then round out the corners of the head on both sides. Periodically, you can comb out the fly as you go. Look at it on your vise to see where you want to trim. And don't over trim this right away. Make small cuts as you go. You also want to look at the fly straight on in the front like so. This way you can see how even it is on both sides. This will determine how it swims. If it's perfectly even on both sides, it will track straight. Otherwise, if one side is more bulky than the other, it will veer off to one side when stripped. Just keep trimming small trims until you're satisfied with the result. Don't over trim this though. It is very easy to end up with almost nothing on the hook. Just get a rough bait fish shape and call it quits. Now this does create a huge mess on your table. And I show you this because these little fibers are all in the fly as well. And we will need to glue on some eyes, but first I like to clean the fly from these loose fibers so the glue holds better. Running the fly underwater is a great way to clean it out. It also allows you to see the profile of the fly when it's wet. And I was able to see that this will track funky if I don't trim off a small section. So put this fly aside and you can go ahead and tie up another one, or just take a break. You want to let this dry before adding eyes, but you're going to end up with something like this. Now once the fly dries, you might find, like with this one, that there are some errant fibers that should be trimmed. Do a few trims before adding the eyes if you would like. Now I use oversized eyes for this, but you could very easily use smaller eyes as well. The eyes I'm using are from Risen. They are sticky back 3D eyes. I like to get them ready by placing them on my hand. And plus it's always fun to do a hand face. <laughs> For glue, I like the gel type super glue here. One dot on the front like so, and drop the eye on. Now the gel super glue gives you a few seconds to move the eye around to your desired location before it sets. Once you're happy, just press it down firmly with something to get the glue to set, and then move on to the other side. Now, when placing it down on the other side, make sure you position the eyes even on both sides. Look at it on top and also directly in front, and this will help to determine if the eyes are placed on evenly. Just keep in mind, even eyes make the fly track evenly. Well, that's it. You're done with this fly. So this isn't exactly the quickest fly to tie, but they are very durable. The eyes might come off after a few strikes, but the fly still fishes without eyes just fine and you can always add more eyes on for your next trip. They're a great way to match the hatch type of fly, and you could really tie this in any color combination. This color combo is specifically called the Everglade Special, but get creative and tie it in whatever colors you want. As always, I'm linking all the materials used on this fly in the description section of the video, and many of these materials are less expensive, but as good or better quality than you would find at most other places. In fact, Risen, who sells the hooks that I use, is even offering you all a discount for just being my subscriber. So when buying from them, type in McFly at checkout, and you will get 15% off anything in their shop. As for the other materials, I will also link where you can find those as well. So I do appreciate each and every single one of my subscribers, and I work very hard to make all my content free for people to view, since not everyone has the resources to pay for tying lessons. And this is why I'm using YouTube. However, some of you do have the ability to donate, and every cent helps me keep doing what I'm doing. So if you like the content and you want to help out, a link to my donate page will be in the description section as well. Every amount helps, and I really appreciate your donation. Hey, well thanks for watching. You all have a great weekend. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish. Just get a rough bait fish. Just get a rough bait fish. Just get a rough bait fish shape. No, can't talk. Get, just get a rough bait fish shape, and call it quits.